I have to be honest with you guys, I really didn't know very much about Depleted Uranium until Depleted Uranium is a war crime, the song, as well as just kind of reading things that you guys brought to my attention. And I think that's kind of working out to be the way that a lot of people are finding out about it. There's been a bit of a development in that story. Maybe you can just explain, first of all, what Depleted Uranium is. Yeah, Depleted Uranium, it's a substance that's so dense that any armament that is coated with Depleted Uranium uh, becomes an armor-piercing armament. Depleted uranium is a substance that's a byproduct of nuclear power. It used to be a waste product. Real, they realized they could make money from it because it is so good on armament. It has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. It is radioactive and the name is misleading because you think, oh, depleted uranium, cool man, this stuff's not, it's not dangerous it's depleted, anymore. It's depleted, man. It's exactly. depleted. It ain't real. <laughs> But, but unfortunately, it is. It's highly toxic. It's radioactive. When it hits its target, there's a white dust that shoots up in the air. Whenever that's inhaled in your body, it causes problems for you. It causes birth defects in kids. It, it, it affects uh, the lymph nodes of, of people. It gives them cancer. So when it turns into that fine dust, it goes into the soil. And then that soil is used for... Uh whether it's for farming or whether you're driving around and it, you know, the truck that you're in or the car that you're in kicks up the dust, you breathe it in. So that, that substance is in the, uh, in the soil for years and years to come. So not only are we destroying the environment for the people who are there right now, but we're destroying the environment for people for many years to come. And that is, a, you know, that's a war crime. We can't, uh, we can't uh, torture people who have never been in combat or civilians who have nothing to do with it. And that's essentially what we're doing for people who are going to be there for years to come. So what happened was, you know, we worked with a congressman in the United States to, to put forward a push to do a congressional study of depleted uranium. And after many years of uh, Congressman Jim McDermott working on this issue, um, we were able to lend our voice uh, to the causal and, and our voice along with many others. I think it just built, it swelled into a huge chorus and, and from that a study was passed. Does that make you optimistic? I mean, when you start researching these things, it can be kind of depressing when you start to see what's going on in the world out there. But, you know, you, you brought awareness to it, you got petitions going, you got people talking about it, and now Congress has to do a, a study on it. That's going to make you feel good. Well, for sure. It definitely does. And, and again, like I said, we we fight battles for years and years and, and don't think that things are ever going to change, but we think that it's important enough for us to continue to fight. And this is one that, uh, that we we're able to actually have uh, impact on. So it definitely definitely gives you an incentive to keep fighting the battles. So what's the next battle? <laughs> There's so many. You, you There's so many. Pick one, man. We don't have to have a middleman. We don't have to have somebody who says, well, this is deemed acceptable to be on our airwaves and, and has to go through certain, uh, uh, certain vetting processes.